It's originally a 56 volt works uh, electric uh, push mower. I, I got a hold of a, a Jazzy wheelchair. Um, this is the battery uh, compartment that uh, was mounted in the wheelchair. I cut it off and I mounted it in the back so that I could get as much weight on the wheels that I could. Um, it still runs off the original batteries. I can still you know, see where they're at and take them out and put them in. I found a Jazzy, I think it's a Select Elite. I got a Jazzy wheelchair, and uh, I have another one sitting here just so that I can kind of show you. Um, but what I've done is I've taken um, this whole section of, of the wheelchair, and I, I've cut it off of there. I welded plates to the main section that was cut out of the wheelchair, and uh, I drilled these holes in the previous mounting mounting holes. Pretty much mounting these holes was the trickiest part of it just to make sure that I had the right height that I wanted. Um, it did have a bagger on it before and I've just covered that and I need to get a different shoe, one that has a, a more of an opening uh, for for the grass to shoot out. I've, I've found that this kind of gums up quite a bit. I have a Sabertooth 2x32 uh, that powers both these motors. I'm using a FlySky FSI6 upgraded to a 10 channel. Um, I only use four of those channels, but uh, this controller is also for the drone. When I bought it, it already had these front caster wheels. It, it was just, it was the perfect setup for something like this. In the battery compartment, I got this little rubber cover just to keep everything, to keep everything from shortening. So because I have a 24 volt drivetrain, um, I needed something that was close to 24 volts. Um, I decided to go with a 6S lithium-ion batteries. All of these cells are recycled from uh, old laptop batteries. Um, each one of these packs um, has 20 cells in each one of them. Um, I think it ended up being around like a 30, 30 amp hour battery at 3.6 volts. So each one of these packs is wired in series to get me about 22 volts. The fuse to the switch, off the switch, it powers the saber tooth that's mounted behind this cover, I'll show you in just a minute. And, um, and then the step down also feeds off of the, the step down also feeds off the out of the switch. <laughs> So here's the Sabertooth 2x32. Um, my main power comes in. This feeds the right wheel. This feeds the left wheel motor. I got, I'm using four channels. Um, channel 1 and 2 were um, the forward, left, and right. They drive the motors. They run into S1 and S2. Channel 3 and 4 are my camera signal or my camera servos. I don't know if you can see this, but here's the dip switch settings. Um, I have it on uh, fine movement when it's nearest uh, its center position. It works fantastic. Uh, much better than I even originally thought that it would. Um, but uh, I think the Sabertooth ran 119 bucks. That was the most expensive thing in this whole unit, but well worth it because um, the the engineering that's gone into these is fantastic. It's built well. Uh, it has uh, some awesome capabilities. It can read several different inputs. Um, I think that they're uh, an awesome little unit. So um, it does 32 amps uh, per motor side. So it'd be a 64 amp, and then I think it's a 64 surge per side. So max 128 amps. I've set it to a fixed PWM range. 
Um, and by doing that, uh, uh, its its PWM values are always the same. It never recalculates. Um, when it comes in the box, it's set up to calculate uh, its center position uh, on startup. Um, I didn't want that. Uh, if I were to be moving forward mowing and for some reason it bumped something and, and it rebooted, it would recenter its position to the PWM signal that was coming into it. Um, thus, when I release the lever, it would from in this case of in the case of me going forward, it would begin to go in reverse in its center position when I release the sticks. So on top of that, I also have the receiver. Um, its failsafe is set to 1500 PWM on the uh, channel 1 and 2, the S1 and S2 inputs. Um, <clears throat> that way if I lose signal from the transmitter it will stop and it won't continue on in forward or backward. <laughs> So I've used channel 2 and channel 1 to drive it. There's forward, backwards, left, right. Um, so at the same time I had this other joystick over here uh, which is typically used for uh, throttle and turning uh, on the drone. So uh, what I've done is I've used uh, channel, I think it's channel 3, channel 4, uh, throttle 3, um, and I can't remember what this one is, left and right. Uh, channel 4 I believe you can kind of see you can see the camera that I have mounted here on two servos uh, here's channel 3 up and down tilt and here's channel 4 left and right So I came inside to show you this. Um, it's a little bright outside. It's hard to see the screen. Um, I got the tilt down and the tilt up on my throttle channel um, so that I can kind of hold its position. I can look down and see if I'm in line uh, with my last cut or I can uh, tilt up to kind of see what's in front of me before I get to it. Um, on channel 4 I have my left and right so I can scroll left here and I still got my up and down mov movement and then I can look right and so um, as I'm driving with this stick I can move around and kind of look around with my other stick and it really helps out a lot too if I want to pass an object um, if I'm coming up on an object if it's on my right I can I, you know I can move forward and at the same time look right to see where I'm at and then slightly make my right turn and make sure that I'm not gonna hit anything <laughs> The Sabertooth has a, has a electric braking, which is kind of like a, a regenerative drive. I don't know, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but um, it does have stopping power when I release that throttle. <laughs>
I did not have to alter any of the electric brakes on this. Um, apparently Jazzy's models are set up to where uh, when you flip it to the neutral position uh, it actually disengages the brake and it doesn't disengage the gear. Um, so you actually still have connection between your motor and your output wheel. Um, so what I've done is I've just flipped them into neutral and uh, it drives itself just fine. <laughs> I have, a, I have a TVL 1000 camera, it feeds into a TS832 a video transmitter. This transmitter can only take 12 volts, uh, so I had to put a step down in it. Um, the step down is wired negative to the battery, positive comes from this switch so that when I turn it off, everything goes off. It comes up in, from the switch, it comes into the end converts it to 12 volt outputs it to the camera transmitter 